Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I am uh, teaching philosophy here at NYU Program on Liberal Studies, and I want to talk with you today about who is the audience of our writings. This is a mini course on how to write a paper, and we have six chapters. The first chapter is why. Why are we writing? The second one is what. What is that we want to make sure we are sharing with the world? The third one is who is our audience? The fourth one is which one are our roots, genealogically speaking, our references? When are we locating our argument? The fifth one is about the architecture of our paper. And the sixth one is how, the tone of our writing style. So in this, uh, in this video, we are addressing the question of who is our audience? This is a fundamental question when you are writing something. I want to make clear that we are talking here about a paper. It could be a book. It could be a type of philosophical writing. Because there are other types of writing that you might just want to write for yourself. For instance, journaling. You might write about something that is very important to you, something very personal, and yet then you decide to burn the whole thing because you don't want anyone else to read it. And that is absolutely fine. But we are not talking about that kind of writing here. We are talking about a writing that we know, even before conceiving it, that is going to be read. First of all, if you are writing a paper in an academic program, your teacher, your professor is going to read your paper. Maybe some of your classmates are going to be reading your papers. Maybe some of your friends and family members are curious about your writing and asking, listen, can I read your paper? And beyond that, maybe your paper come out so good that you want to share with the whole world and you decide to share it somewhere in the internet because you really believe in what you wrote. I'm talking about this type of writing, which is placed in this big, big, uh, strong and beautiful genealogy of philosophy. In fact, philosophy, which means from ancient Greek, the love of wisdom of, or the wisdom of, of love, if you want, and we are talking about writing, writing about something that you really care about, that you really love, which doesn't mean that you agree with that, but it really moves you. So when you go to the roots of philosophy, you will understand that philosophy traditionally, traditionally was dialogical. Uh, think, for instance, of uh, uh, the Upanishads. Uh, there are uh, beautiful existential dialogues there. Think, for instance, of Socrates in the dialogues written by Plato. Uh, think of many interesting dialogues that have been written throughout the ancient world in many different civilizations. So this idea is that I can learn about myself through the others in the dialogue with others. And I want to say this. Because when I'm asking my students to write a paper, I want them to be very clear to their mind that they're not writing to themselves. They're also writing to themselves. But they are writing for an audience. They are writing for a type of writing that is public. Philosophy is a public type of writing that is supposed to enhance society just by even asking the right questions. So the audience is fundamental. Before you write your paper, before you write a job application, before you write a proposal for a project, maybe where you are going to ask some funding, think who is going to be reading you. Who is your audience? There are different levels here. You can go to you know, a wider audience and really try to have a tone that is more accessible, or you can go to a more restricted audience and be OK with a language that not everyone is going to understand. As I mentioned in our second video about what, your argument, no matter your audience, should be clear. Now, the type of writing that you're going to be developing is a different uh, thing. Uh, so you're going to really make sure that you are using a language that your audience can understand. So there is a foundational question that you need to ask before starting your writing process. Who am I writing for? Who is my audience? And I want to make sure that you understand that your audience may not be here today. And in our second 
video, I brought the example of Friedrich Nietzsche, who was a very important Prussian philosopher, who was writing for the future, because he knew that the people of his own time could not understand his message. So you can write for your contemporary audience, but if you believe that your message may not be understood now, you still need a very clear argument. That one you have to have. But your audience, you might be at peace with the fact that maybe someone else in the future may understand you. So I'm just to say, to clarify here, in this non-linear approach to time, that whatever your audience is, can be human, can be algorithms, whatever it is, should be clear to you. Who is your audience? Is just your professor? Is just your classmates? Or maybe you're writing a paper that you want to inspire many more people, be, you know, like outside of what are the requirements of the paper you are writing. So take this and as an existential journey, enjoy your time while writing. It's a precious gift, not only to yourself, but to humankind. Thank you so much, everyone, for your kind attention. And from this video, we are now going to explore the roots, which are your roots, which ones are your references, who are you debating with, or who are you being supported by. Thank you so much for your kind attention, and my name is Francesca Ferrando.